Morning Exercises, July 31st. And on this wise showed he himself. John 21, 1. We have traced this appearance down to the moment when the disciples ascertained who he was. John recognized him first, reminded, as it would appear, by a former miracle of the same kind, and on the performance of which Peter had exclaimed, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Yet Peter was not at present struck with the recollection himself. But no sooner does John say to him, It is the Lord, than the ship can hold him no longer. But girding himself with his fisher's coat, he plunges into the sea to reach him. What rashness! What zeal! How perfectly in character does this man always appear! He was fervent, but acted by feeling rather than reflection. He had a warm heart. The Lord had lately turned and looked upon him in the judgment hall, and he went out and wept bitterly. He had had much forgiven, and he loved much. The Saviour had more than pardoned his late sad conduct, and had sent a message to him distinctively, Go tell my disciples, and Peter. And how could he love him enough? And love is as strong as death. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. The rest of the disciples followed slowly but surely, dragging the net. Had all done like Peter, the fish had been abandoned and the vessel left to be drifted and injured. While we admire some, we must not condemn others. The dispositions and the duties of men are various, and while some perform splendid actions and excite notice, Others go ploddingly on in the sober discharge of their common calling, but they also have the testimony that they please God. What did they find when they came to the land? A fire of coals and fish laid thereon and bread. This was to show that he cared for them, that they should be furnished not only with grace sufficient for them, but with food convenient for them, and that verily they should be fed. He had reminded them of this on a former occasion, when he sent them forth on their missionary excursion unprovided. They had misgivings how they were to be supplied, though they were ashamed to make known their fears. But he who employed them was bound to maintain them, and when they returned, he said, When I sent you forth without purse and scrip, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You serve a kind master, and the world is his in the fullness thereof. Jehovah Jireh. But we read, Thou shalt eat the labor of thy hand. And nothing has such a peculiar relish as what is gained by the blessing of God upon our own endeavors. He therefore also said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to the land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. And thus, while they must have marveled and adored at what was nothing less than a miracle, they were not only supplied for their immediate use, but the sale of the capture would pay their expenses back to Jerusalem, and while waiting there for the promise of the Father. Filled with reverence and awe,
they seemed reserved and disposed to keep back. He therefore invited them, Come and dine. And none of his disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? But still keeping back, Jesus then cometh to them, and taketh bread, and giveth them the fish likewise. The meat was ordinary and coarsely dressed, but it was wholesome, and the appetite of labor made it welcome. We do not live to eat, but eat to live. Nature wants little, and grace less. Luther often dined upon a herring and Junius on an egg. If it be, as it is said, beneath a philosopher to be nice and financial in his food, how much more is it so in a Christian, in a minister? Jesus censured Martha and commended Mary. The table he spreads for us is frugal and simple. It is the world, the flesh, the devil, disease, and death bring in the rest. No mention is made of his blessing, the repast, but there is no doubt but he did. It was his constant usage to teach us to be religious in our common actions, and that man liveth not by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. But he did actually partake of the provision himself. What says Peter? He showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Did he rise with the same body that he had died? Behold, said he, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Did his body undergo any change before his ascension? Will things in a future state be possible that are not necessary? We know but in part, and the sacred writers prophesy but in part. But blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Let me be one of the number to whom he shall say, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel.